welcome back. Um, I want to talk today about the most valuable resource uh, that you're going to have in your hives and in your yards, and that's drawn comb. Um, when you buy frames from the store, whether they're assembled or unassembled, you're going to put foundation in there. And that's what your foundation is going to be stored as. It's just undrawn um, foundation. It's got the little impressions of little hexagons on there, right in there. And then what's going to happen is the bees will go in there and they're going to produce wax and they're going to draw all those cells out to be deeper. They're going to draw them off of the foundation to almost be, you know, flush with this, that space right there. And what it's going to wind up looking like is this. Now, for demonstration purposes, I'm just using, I'm showing you guys um, and gals my uh, mediums from my supers from last year. Uh, this is probably the only time you're going to have a surplus of drawn comb in, in storage, and that's in the wintertime when those boxes come out of production. You know, or if you did some combines and now you have freed up equipment, you put it in your storage in your honey house or wherever you store your equipment. Um, so the two methods I want to go over today is the first method will be in this video, and that's not anything that you have to actually do. There's no how-to involved in that. So the part two video to this, uh, I'll be making really shortly right after this, is actually the how-to part for the second method, which is basically waxing your, your, your frames. So put that on the back burner for now, and uh, I'll see you in the next video for that if you're interested in learning how to do that. So, but what I want to discuss today is the first method that I use to encourage uh, comb building is I basically found through my journeys, I read this and tried it out on my own, because everything I read, I don't take this fact until I try it, and it actually works or doesn't work. And this I find does work. So I read way in the beginning that a good way to draw out uh, brand new foundations is by putting it between brood frames. Uh, there's a couple things you have to be careful of. You don't want to do this early in the spring when the nighttime temperature still might get low enough where the bees are going to cluster and leave that brood to chill. So everything that I'm telling you now about splitting frames of brood with an empty, um, undrawn frame, is it's going to be for way into spring when you know your, your bees are out of cluster and you're, you're in full-blown spring and, you know, you don't have to worry about those nighttime temperatures getting much below 50, maybe 45. Um, and, you know, then you're, you're good to go to use this method. So basically all you do is take your frame, find frames of uh, capped brood, even some open larva. If your hive is that populated, this won't disrupt them that much. I mean, I wouldn't do every other and break up every frame of brood, but I would sneak in here and there. And I would sneak in an undrawn frame between two frames of, of brood, and you'll find that they'll start drawing it out. Now you'll notice, well, these are honey super frames. There's no brood up in the honey supers. The only brood that you have is in your, your deep boxes down below, and there's a trick for that too. It's not much of a trick, you just have to be mindful. Um, I will actually sneak these down in between broods in the deep box. If there's, a, let's say there's an empty frame in my deep box below that's not really doing anything, I'll take it out, that makes a gap, and put this right between two brood frames. I wouldn't leave it there for more than a couple days, maybe three days, and you would check on it. And hopefully they've started drawing out the wax already. If they have, take the frame out and put it, you know, aside in storage for now, or you want to get that used quick in your honey supers. So you pull that up and then, um, you know, replace that other frame that you took out or put in a deep frame that needs to be drawn out down below using the same method. The reason why you don't want to leave this in the deep box too long is because the, you're what they call violating bee space. They're literally going to just draw this out to the size of a deep frame if you leave it in there too long. It's not detrimental to them, but it's a real um, hassle and it's going to be a mess for you. Um, so yeah, two or three days, check it. If they started drawing it out, awesome. Pull it out. I would say even if they didn't start drawing it out, pull it out anyway, because you might be asking something of them that they just don't want to do. Um, 
you know, again, we're encouraging. We're not forcing them to do something that they normally wouldn't do. Um, so that's, um, that's really it for that method. I do want to, one other do not, an absolute don't, is I would never put an undrawn frame. And I say I would never do it because I have done it and I've learned to never do it. Don't put an undrawn frame between two honey frames. What happens a lot of the time, I would say most of the time, is they're just going to draw that honey frame out into this existing space. You're violating bee space again. And they're going to want to draw. See, they'll keep drawing honey frames out. The brood frames get drawn to a certain spot, and they just they stop. They have to be a certain depth. The honey frames, they'll just keep drawing it out because they're, they're gluttonous, and they want to store as much honey as they can in the space that they're given, and they already have that frame drawn out. They will literally just draw that out right out until it touches this. This frame is going to be useless, and it's going to be impossible to pull the honey frame out without tearing comb and just making a mess. You don't want to do that. Um, please leave any comments and questions. I am really new at this. This isn't going to be a really busy channel. I don't see myself not being able to address any questions in the comments. Um, I encourage you to subscribe, not for my sake. As I mentioned in my last video, I'm not planning on becoming uh, a monetized YouTuber. I just want to put good information out there and, um, you know, ways that I do things that will help new beekeepers get going in their first year, second year, even third year. And then by that time, you can start spreading your wings and trying out your own things. Um, I'm not claiming to know everything or even claim that my methods are the best. Um, but it, it, it will get you uh, going in the right direction. And again, these are all methods that I use. They're not the only way to do it. There's other ways to do it. There might be better ways to do it. This is what I do. And um, it works for me. I've been doing it for nine years, so. Again, please leave comments and, and ask me questions. Um, I'm new at this. I'm probably talking a little fast and uh, I might be jumping around the place a little bit. This is literally my second video. So kind of help me to help you a little bit. And then as these videos go on, they'll become more and more polished and maybe they will be a little more easier to follow. Um, shoot your questions at me. I, I'm looking forward to any questions you have that I can answer for you. And please check out part two because I'm gonna explain how I wax these frames. Thanks for watching.